Hey, welcome back, CISSP wannabes. Once again, I'm Colin Weaver. You're here because you want to see the CISSP questions of the day, where each and every time I come at you, I'm going to bring you two questions to help you get prepped for that exam. So, here comes question number one. A new incident investigator is preparing her jump kit. My question for you is, which of the items that I'm going to show you is the least likely to be included in that kit? Here's your answer choices. Look them over. When you think you got it, click play. We can talk it out. First answer choice on the list says that she is going to have included in that kit a list of network di or a, some network diagrams as well as a list of critical assets. And absolutely, that kind of stuff would be available to her and she'd want to have that handle, uh, you know, handily available so that she can go in and get to it. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's hard copies or digital copies, but she's going to want to have that kind of information available to her. So certainly put that in the jump kit. Number two says that she might go in and have a database of uh, hashes of critical system files. And that's definitely something that could be included in this junk kit. Uh, in fact, in the United States, there's the National Software Reference Library that actually keeps a database that you can go download of hash values for uh, you know, different operating systems and different critical system files within those operating systems. The benefit to you is that you have this uh, list of hashes that are from an otherwise, tr otherwise trusted source that you can use to go in and, and fairly quickly validate those hashes of the known goods with hashes that you might see on a system uh, to tell you whether or not this, say, this DLL has been you know, replaced or modified or something like that. So uh, that may, may very well be in a, in a uh, jump kit, something like that. How about the next answer choice that she is going to bring with her copies of well-known malware or common malware uh, for comparison to the uh, live systems? Don't think so. Um, you know, toting around live instances of malware uh, is not likely to be something that's going to be included in this. Again, the uh, if you have them with you and you're out, you know, in the field as an investigator. Um, is it possible those things could somehow get loose from you and end up on a system? I would certainly hope not, but we can reduce the likelihood of that happening by not taking them with us in the first place. It's not to say you don't have in a lab environment copies of those things that you use for you know, investigation and analysis, but uh, taking them with you out into the live environment in a form of a jump kit, not going to happen. So that's the answer choice that I'm looking for here. Last two answer choice says that you're going to have drive imaging tools and a laptop loaded with all kinds of super cool software like uh, sniffers and all kinds of interesting forensics programs that are going to help you do stuff. Totally. Uh, you're going to want to have a drive imaging tool, which is a tool specifically designed to allow you to make images of systems, uh, not just going in and just copying files. Uh, and you're also, of course, going to have a super cool laptop with all kinds of fancy tools on it that you can use to go in and do packet captures or, or other kinds of uh, analysis to go in and make sure that's what's happening is you know, worthy of additional like, investigation. So there you go. All right, question number two today is, which of the items that I'm about to show you is not part of the incident response life cycle? There's your choices. Look them over. When you think you got it, click play. I'll walk it through. All right, the four phases of the incident response life cycle. Uh, phase one, preparation. Phase two is uh, detection and analysis. Phase three is containment, eradication, and recovery. And then phase four are your post-incident activities. So the one item that is not included in that is prevention. Okay. Prevention, obviously important. Okay. A lot of time and energy spent on prevention, but it's not part of the incident response life cycle. All right, so there you have it. Two more questions down. Hope you dug them, hope you dug my shirt change, and that's it. I'll see you later.